Hello and welcome to Polycosm. My name is Christina and today's quick tip is going to be super exciting. We're going to be looking into the new cloth brush in sculpt mode and I'm going to show you how to use it to get a range of different results and how to use it for different purposes from clothing to wrinkles to organic design like my jellyfish earlier this week. So without further ado, let's get started. Starting off, I wanted to quickly talk about how to find the blender build containing this feature. It's still an alpha and doesn't even have a brush icon. Well, at least my build doesn't at this moment, but the feature works really well. If you go to the experimental build page on the Blender website, they'll have an alpha build that you can download. So I'm just going to go through the settings quickly here. You're going to need a mesh or a plane with a decent amount of subdivisions. I'm just going to be using a plane for this example and setting it to smooth shading by right clicking the model. In sculpt mode, find the cloth brush and go to the active tool and workspace settings panel at the top. Scroll down and you'll see a range of settings. I'm going to turn symmetry off and go through the different deformation settings. As I've understood, the higher you set cloth mass, the heavier the fabric behaves. Basically, the effect is less intense. As for damping, the higher you set the number, the less of an effect it will have. These will be the two most important settings while you're using the cloth brush, as it really affects the way you kind of interact with the mesh. So yeah, let's go through the deformations. Using drag set to radial will drag the fabric and create some really nice bunched up folds. Plane will produce a similar effect but has a wider, more flattened radius, if that makes sense. Whereas radial is more contained within a certain circular diameter. Grab is very similar to drag but it kind of grabs a wider area and it does it a bit more effectively and more powerfully. Here's another deformation where you want to make sure you've set the damping and cloth mass higher and maybe the strength a bit down. But as you can see, like you can get some really nice organic effects from this. Inflate can be pretty intense, so make sure to set the cloth mass and damping fairly high. You can hold down CTRL while using the brush to deflate the fabric instead. A really neat trick that you can do is kind of mask parts of your mesh off like this and kind of inflate or deflate the areas around it. You can invert the mask and do the opposite effect. You can create some really interesting shapes this way. Pinch will obviously pinch the fabric in a specific place, but be careful as this can sort of break the geometry of your mesh if you're not careful. Remember to set the damping fairly high here as well to avoid this. If your mesh does get a bit too ugly looking, you can always go over it with a smooth brush by holding shift. Pinch perpendicular is quite similar and honestly I don't really understand the difference. It's just another way to kind of pinch the fabric. Push is quite simple and just pushes the mesh around. This one is good for creating big changes in the geometry and you'll want to turn down the cloth mass and damping for a bigger effect. So expand is a bit of a weird one. It's very random and unpredictable, but like in the jellyfish sculpt, that randomness came in really handy for the tentacles, where I did sort of like a crinkly effect. For this one, I like using plane and smoothing the mesh afterwards. Now, having gone through all of that, here's our first example. Let's say you have a figure sitting and you want to sculpt some trousers on them. Using a cylinder and cutting off the faces in the end, I subdivided this mesh using a bunch of subdivision modifiers. 
If this was supposed to be a tighter item of clothing, like a tight tank top for example, you can use the shrink wrap modifier in order to get the cloth to wrap around your mesh. All you need to do is choose the model with the eyedropper tool, set the mode to near surface, choose on surface on the offset, and you can see it nicely wraps around the model's chest. So back to the leg. Using grab as the deformation tool while being set to radial in force fall off, we get some really nice folds, but it's pulling the entire thing. The folds only happen in the crevice area or basically the underside of the knee, so the fabric is tight at the front of the knee but bunches up at the back of the knee. So let's try masking off a part of the front knee as well as the ends as we don't want those parts to be moving either. So trying again, we see it working. Obviously we would need to go in and flatten the sides, smooth out some folds and so on, but it's all about experimentation really. Our second example involves using the cloth brush as a way to create wrinkles. Set the deformation to drag, force fall off to radial, and you can try pulling the skin in order to create some really nice wrinkly effects. Obviously this doesn't work 100% on its own, so you'll probably have to do some refinement work, for example using the pinch brush, but it's a great way to create some organic folds and quick details in the skin. Now this part's my favorite. For our last example, I wanted to do a cloth simulation using the newly released cloth add-on called Simply Cloth and manipulate the cloth further using the cloth brush. All of these settings are available in Blender's simulations panel, but this add-on makes this just a whole lot easier. I'll release a full quick tip video once I've gotten the hang of it more. So here I am simulating a cape blowing in the wind, and once I've gotten something that looks nice, let's try to use a cloth brush on it. I wanted to exaggerate the silhouette a bit more, add a bit more drama, a bit more wind to it. So the main tool I used was push with the fall off set to radial. So I hope you found all of this as exciting as I did, especially paired with the newly released Simply Cloth add-on. The cloth brush is going to come in really handy when sculpting clothes, capes, fabric, wrinkles and even organic texture like bark on a tree or weird alien skin. Again, big thanks to Pablo de Barro for being such an amazing Blender developer. You can follow him on Twitter for sneak peeks and updates on what he's been working on. Thanks so much for watching guys! As I'm recording this, we're currently working on a creature design episode for Conspecration, so we honestly can't wait to release that. See you later guys! Bye!